For those of you that were wondering whether or not I was going to review Dynamite this week, I am here. I'm going to do so. If you're going to ask me, where's the SmackDown review? It's coming, damn it. Sometimes these things take time, okay? Doing a lot of videos this month. You know, trying the absolute best I can. I hope some of you guys will be happy that you got more content out of me the past few months on a consistent basis. Well, fewer of you obviously watch each video, so it's like, what the fuck? But anyways, nonetheless, I am here to review Dynamite, and hopefully soon I can get on a more regular, consistent cadence of doing it right after the show. Um, but, I will say, like, now we're looking back a couple of days later, this week's Dynamite show was mostly just a blur to me. It really was. And no way, shape, or form does that mean that the show was great or that the show was really bad. I don't think it was either one of those. It was a passable, serviceable show. But some stuff happened in the show that just, like, transfixed me and you know, really ruined my concentration for most of the rest of the night, to be honest with you. Now, it certainly wasn't that way in the opening match. Brian Cage versus Matt Seidel. Like... This match was solid. Solid type of opening television match. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too extreme. No 20-25 minute 50-50 back and forth between a guy in cage that you're really investing in versus a, a somewhat known commodity like Seidel, who you're really not, who's a guy that's there and he's nice to have, but you're not going to make a star out of him, let's just be honest. Um, you know, most memorable thing to me about this was the finish looked fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. You know, that's the type of finish that can make a guy like Brian Cage look really, really good to this audience. And you know, this whole kind of Team Taz thing, like, I can, I can jive with this. Like, Ricky Starks getting some shine on the mic is a good thing to me. And like I talked about, when I really got my first exposure to him was on the NWA Power Show. It's like you could see it. Again, I've talked about it before, so I'm kind of getting redundant here, but you could see it, but it wasn't there yet. Man, it's landing and connecting here really, really, really well. Um, and I like the fact that they're trying to come after Cody in the TNT title. Um, which then brings us to Cody Rhodes. You know, I, I've defended Cody, even though he doesn't deserve it. You know, he's a lying bitch. I've defended him. Against those that try to compare him to the founder in the Memphis Midcard piece of crap. Or the game Ugga. Trying to act like he's got Ugga. With the burials of young Talenta. And, and he hasn't been that. But the one thing I will say, if you want to make a comparison and say there are similarities, the over-the-top entrances. Like, Cody's entrances are kind of over-the-top relative to where his position on the card actually is. I mean, that's the truth. Am I wrong? Um, but who gives a crap about what Cody has to say? Because I'm in love. Like, I'm absolutely, totally, completely in love. I had no idea who she was when, when she walked out and started talking shit to Cody, but it doesn't matter. I know who she is now. And I know she's gonna be my wife, and damn it all, none of you, 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 any of you, are gonna do anything to stop me. It's inevitable. It's gonna happen. Jade Cargill. Number one, how come none of you told me about her before? Number two, why did you have to be such persistently petulant cock blockers and not tell me about her before? Number three. Oh my god, be still my beating heart to come out and put down Cody and talk shit about Cody and talk about how he doesn't measure up as a man. Bravo, my dear! Bravo! You complete me, Jade! I love you. You complete me. I love you. Magnificent. And she said he's supposed to be a giant killer, but she's got a giant that he can't slay. Shock! 
And then, of course, here come the neckbeard, neckbeards. Oh, we don't want to do this WWE-style crap, WCW-style crap. We want our AEW Dynamite to only draw 750,000 viewers because that's what nerd is all about. No. It ties into the network that they're on, TNT. Why the hell would you not want to have Shaq involved? I get you might be afraid of it being an actual match and it's sucking, but every once in a while... Too bad! That's what you want to do if you want to grow your brand. Why would you not want to grow this brand and see more people watch so that way everybody involved could make more money and they become even more competitive, which means more people want to come there because they want to make more money. Like, put aside your personal taste, of which you don't have any anyway, when you look at half of what you like with professional wrestling today. Ah. Too bad! But my goodness... Jade Cargill, monstrously beautiful. Like, just oozing confidence, sex appeal, put together. And not just in a physical kind of, like, that's a goddess. Like, if you had any doubts about God or you wanted to be agnostic or atheistic, like, Jade Cargill makes you believe in a higher power. Ugh, that's all I'm saying, because that don't happen by accident. That has to be some some way, somehow, somebody's master plan. Just saying. But then here, of course, comes Glory Hog Brandy Rhodes, and she's got to get into the act, because now somebody's been talking and been trifling towards her man. And look, maybe this next little piece that I'm going to say is going to offend some of you, and I don't give a shit. I am going to speak off of my own personal experiences. I have dated black women and exclusively black women for almost two decades. So you will have to forgive me here for just one second if I laugh at everything involved with what happened with Brandy here. The only good thing about it was when my sexy Queen Jade smacked her on her bony ass. First of all, everything that Brandy said her trying to be ratchet or ghetto or whatever the hell white people want to say, and they're sitting there giggly tipsing about it, being like, oh, this is the most entertaining thing she's got, and this is awesome, and this is great. And this is the type of sass we expected out of her, like in a Tyler Perry movie. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No. It's bullshit. It sounded fake. It sounded forced. I've dated all types of black women, and... I have been at the receiving end of some types of rants like that. And the one thing I can promise you is none of them ever felt that fake, that phony, that forced compared to what the hell you just heard from Brandy. That was horse shit. That was absolute garbage. Because on the mic, she is garbage. She has no business being in the spot that she's in, continually being put in the spot. And if we want to inject real here, and we want to get real, real, let's be completely clear. Now, I don't know how it goes with how black women and black men interact with their relationships, or how black women and black women interact in their personal sexual relationships. Like, I don't know the dynamics there, so I can't speak to those. But what I can speak to is my experiences with black women interacting with white men or interacting with other black women when it comes to white men. And here's what I can tell you. The second that Brandy came out and started going after Jade and doing all of her blah, 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 I immediately farted at the whole concept of it. Because let me tell you something, as a white boy, ain't no way in hell, and let me repeat again, ain't no way in hell it's going down like that. If any of you ever wanted a history lesson, if anybody ever wanted to know what this goes down like, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to tell you now. Here's what would happen in the real world. Jade's sitting there and talking all of this trash to Cody. Jade's the one sitting there and looking him up and down. What's going to happen in the real world, Brandy's immediately going to come out, storm right past the heifer, and she's going to go straight to Cody, and she's going to yell at him. Why are you talking to her like that? Why are you letting her talk to you like that? Y'all been fucking? You gonna fuck her? You wanna fuck her? How long y'all been fucking? Like, it would all be Cody's fault. Let me be clear. 
She would act like Jade didn't even exist. She would call her names and stuff. But at the end of the day, Cody, singularly, entirely, even if he's never met her before, he's never seen her before, it would 100% obviously be his fault. And he obviously has been stepping out on her and two-timing her. And all the while, what's really happening is Brandy is sitting there and doing all the dirty deeds on the side. The ones that are the most proactive in their insecurities about cheating are usually the ones that have got all the dirt and grime going on, I promise you and I believe you. So the whole act was forced stupid and surely appealed to a lot of white fans that don't get it, don't understand how stupid this is and just how unrealistic this is that just fall into that, oh, that's how black women act when they get mad type of crap, and nothing could be further from the truth. If anything, the other alternative of what Brandy would have done, she would have come out, and if Cody would have tried to say anything, she would have just cut him off every time she asked him a question that required an answer from him. She would never let him get in a word edgewise. That's more likely what would have happened. Or even worse, he would have tried to talk to her and explain and actually said something logical, and she would totally dismiss it or not even interact with him and then give him a freaking silent treatment for days. If you're going to do this crap and you're going to sit there and try and actually be real, then actually be real. Who in the hell in their right mind would buy this phony baloney bullshit? Shit. Give me a freaking break here. The only good thing about it was when she turned her back on Jay and she got her ass smacked. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. But Jade Cargill, oh, love. Love, be still my beating heart. Like, after this, like, how the hell am I supposed to contrary? What am I supposed to do? Dean Ambrose had a promo when he said something. Who gives a crap? Like, I'm still thinking about my future wife here. The bunkhouse match. It was bloody and it was brutal, but I had zero emotional investment in it. Like, who can follow Jade Cargill? Nobody! Thankfully, some of these guys went out there and filled some time until we got to something that did matter, which was MJF being inducted into the inner circle, which was fantastic, and I can't wait to see how everything goes with their Vegas trip next week. I'm sure it will be splendid, and you know what? I hope MJF just comes out and admits that he's trying to get Sammy out of there and he doesn't want him involved because he shouldn't want the Spanish guy involved because Sammy Guevara can suck right off. He sucks. Barry. It's ridiculous. The funniest thing of all, the entire thing, is all that money they spent on balloons. And those balloons just went flying off into downtown Jacksonville. <laughs> so this I actually remember, and this I enjoy. Sean Spears and Scorpio Sky probably should have went back and watched a highlight or two of this. I know the match happened, and I can't remember a damn thing. And admittedly, again, I think this is just because I'm in love. Like, when you're in love, stupid things happen. When you're in love, you lose all control of your senses. You lose all control of your emotions. You lose your ability to focus. Your heart flutters, and it's not just from the tachycardia. You know, I'm like, oh, be still, my beating heart. And then, to get red velvet in a match. Oh, my goodness. My backup wife. This is fantastic. I just wish they would stop having her lose every match that she's in. But this is one of the better weeks to be for the AEW women's division in quite some time. And the champion was nowhere to be seen. And I think number one contender, whoever the hell that might be, is also nowhere to be seen. Probably more a reflection of your women's division than anything else. But, oh, Red Velvet, I'd eat that cake all day long. And Jade Cargill, like, that is, that's not even like spank bank material. Like I would, I would never, never degrade her to that. Like that's the, you rub her feet and her body after a long day and you pour her a glass of wine or, you know, freaking green vegetable juice, whatever the hell she wants to drink. Like she's the queen, she's the boss, she's in charge. I'm just a little white bitch that she can boss around. I draw her bubble bath. Like, I make all of her meals. 
And when I inevitably burn them, then I order out something. Like, I go get it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of love that we're talking about here. This is real. This is serious. This is like, you bring her home to Bonnie Sue, and you tell her about all the virtuous good things that you do because you're a good little Jeffy, and you would never do anything bad to hurt Jade. Yeah, and main event, right? Uh, Penta versus Phoenix? Sure. That match happened. You know, this, and this one's okay. Like, it's been hyped up. You know, it involved Eddie Kingston getting some mic time. You know, that will make me pay attention. Even when sometimes the things that he's talking about don't really appeal to me. Eddie Kingston can make me care about him. Make me care about that character. And that means something. But this is one of these things that Tony Khan's going to have to be careful of. You've got to be careful when you go up and you talk about hyping up things that are earth-shattering or landscape-changing or this is a huge, huge moment. Like, Pac coming back is cool. Pac returning is a big deal. Pac returning is something worthy of being a cliffhanger type of thing for the main event of your show to hook fans into coming back to watch next week. I'm cool with that. I am absolutely, positively cool with that. But you probably should go around suggesting like it's the, the next big deal type of thing because it's not that. Like, you can't set yourselves up for failure too many times. Um, but the main event match was cool and the return was nice. You know, there were enough things in this show, admittedly, you know, that I really enjoyed. Like seeing Cody get verbally funk punked out, like, that was fantastic. Like being able to think about Jade the rest of the night was magnificent! Still a few days later. I'm sprung. She's got me doing the dishes. That's all I'll say. Um, so I enjoyed this show. The next time, y'all know that there's somebody out there that I would really be into. Could you please do the old swipey a favor? Like, I don't have much in life anymore. I really, truly don't. Like, maybe you think I live in the Chateau de Schlegel, and, and I live this glorious, magnificent life. I really, truly don't. Like, I really don't have much anymore. There, there just isn't much. So would it kill you every once in a while to give the old Schleggy just a little bit of a heads up? Just a little bit of a warm up? Just a little bit of a what what? A what's up? Is that too much to ask? Is it? Mm. Mm -mm. Oh. That's it. I'm done. Because I'm in love. Magnificent.